he is risen. Three small words that brought the collective pace of humanity to an absolute standstill. He is risen. Three words that shattered prisons. Words that shook the earth's foundations. Words that transformed a sense of utter despair into cries of pure joy and ecstasy. Echoes of history's greatest triumph that still shape our reality. Even today, we're assaulted by constant distraction, countless sources waging war for our attention, yet three words pierce the noise. In our hunger for validation, our desperate pleas for love and attention, three words calm our anxiety. In a universe spinning at breakneck speed, its inhabitants locked in an existential crisis, three words proclaim the purpose of our existence. He is risen. Lay hold of this truth and embrace the peace within. Yesterday, fear reigned in our hearts. Yesterday, we sat in crippling darkness. Yesterday, we suffered abuse and all the accusations of a broken world. But today, our king, our healer, our defender is risen. And this reality doesn't merely accompany us on a meaningless journey. This changes everything. For you see, if he is risen, then all other pursuits become secondary. All of our failures become insignificant. All criticisms and condemnations become irrelevant. There is only his word, his mission, and his infinite, unconditional love for you. Because he is risen, we look to tomorrow. Tomorrow, we will stop defining our worth through status and social media. Tomorrow, we will together build an everlasting kingdom. Tomorrow and every day after, we will dance in the radiance of a redeeming savior who crushed death and set us free. There is nothing that Jesus cannot overcome. We know this because he lives. We know this because he is risen. Good morning, coming to church. Come on, how many believe that Jesus is alive and well this morning? Come on, do you believe that the king is on the throne and he's alive with breath in his body? Come on. We want to welcome you to Covenant Church. We want to welcome our online. Thank you for choosing our platform to watch this morning. And if you want to get out your phones real quick, we want you to share the live. You can scan this QR code and it takes you to the links of all the platforms that we're live on this morning. Amen? Come in. Are you ready to worship this morning? Come on, step out of your seats this morning. We're just going to invite the King of Glory into the room. We're going to invite the risen King into the room this morning. Come on, lift your hands all over the room. Jesus, we praise you this morning. Jesus, we honor you. Father, we praise you that you are alive and well. We're thankful for the blood this morning. We believe that death could not hold you, that the grave could not keep you. And God, we remember that you ascended into hell and you took back the keys of death, hell, and the grave. God, we believe, Jesus, that you reign with all authority this morning, Jesus. We believe, God, that you not only took authority over death, but you took authority over depression in the room. We believe that you took authority over sickness in the room. So we say, Jesus, have your way in the room this morning. God, have your way in the room this morning. Come on, let's sing this. Holy death could not hold.
this morning. Put your hands together. Come on. Come, we're thankful for the blood. Lord, we're so thankful that you redeemed us. Come on, come on.
you're thankful that Jesus paid it all. He paid it all. Let's all sing this chorus together before we transition. Because he lives. Sing it out. I can face tomorrow. time every voice if you can sing it out now can you just take just a few seconds just to thank him to tell him that you love him if you've been redeemed if you've been forgiven if a price has been paid that you couldn't pay but a man on a cross looked down the portals of time and paid a debt that you owed, this is your moment just to say, Lord, I thank you. Jesus, I worship you because you are the living God that paid my debt. You are my ransom. I worship you. I lift up my voice. I lift up my hands to give you the praise that you are worthy of, Lord, not because I'm made to, Lord, but because you have certainly earned all that I can give you. Anybody thankful this morning for all that he has done for you? Thankful that he's the God of your life. Hallelujah. Have you been forgiven this morning? How many of you, you've been forgiven more than you could have ever dreamed? Rescued? from an enemy's pit how many can, can just think about where you would have been had it not been for the blood had it not been for the life of Jesus had there not been a cross but you can say today thank God I'm not who I used to be when somebody brings up yesterday and brings up the past you tell them that's fine, but that's not who I am anymore. Because on a hill far away stood that old rugged cross. He's my Savior. We're going to get ready to transition and receive communion as we do that. As you are making your way back, just say good morning to somebody and say hi to them. But we're going to transition and prepare to receive communion this morning. If you're at home and you have the elements, you can get those ready.
blessing to have all of you in the Lord's house today. What a blessing to have all of you ready to receive of what the Lord has given us. We're going to prepare our hearts and our minds to receive of the Lord's communion. If you're newer with us and you're not sure what that is, I'll try to briefly explain it. If you're in the house or at your home, we're going to prepare these elements today. And if you would like to receive them, we invite you to do that. If you say, hey, Josh, I'm just not quite ready, that's fine. When the elements come to you, you can just keep passing them along. This We're not going to force this on anybody, but the Bible tells us that when Jesus met with his disciples, what we know as the Last Supper, right before he was betrayed, the Bible says that he took the bread and he broke it. The bread represents the body of Jesus. The bread, when we receive the bread, we are both remembering and receiving. And when he broke the bread, he blessed it and he said, as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. So every time we receive communion, the reason we do it is we remember what he did. We remember who he was. We remember that Isaiah 53 tells us that his body was breathed beaten, mutilated for my peace, for my joy, for my healing. The Bible tells us and history says that Jesus was beaten beyond recognition. He took so many stripes. The Bible and history teaches that you could literally see bones protruding out of flesh. And, and I don't want to get too gross, but this is what he did for you. And it says that Jesus said, no one can take my life. I lay it down. And if you could put your name there, you could say he laid it down so Josh could be saved. He laid it down so that Amber could be saved. He laid it down and he was beaten so that I could be healed. By his stripes, I am healed. So when he broke the bread and he blessed it and he gave it to him, he said, he said, do this as often as you do it in remembrance of me. And so we're not only remembering, but we're receiving. So when you receive the bread, you receive the price he paid in his body. You need a healing. You believe for healing. You need a touch in your soul, in your mind. You Listen, Isaiah 53 tells us that he didn't just uh, go to, to heal the physical body. He he was beaten and the chastisement of my peace was upon him it's everything from the emotion to the soul to the spirit to the body he jesus paid it all that's the beauty of my god what what has yours done lately that's the beauty of my god and then the bible says he took the cup and he blessed it and once again he said drink this 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 cup represents his blood and if you're new to church and Jesus and all that, I know you, you guys are like, and I didn't come to church to talk about blood. But if you understood what can wash away my sin, nothing but the blood of Jesus. If you understood that the Bible says that life is in the blood. And so you say, Josh, what does that look like? When he was on the cross and that blood dripped, the Bible teaches us that my redemption came through the blood. Life comes through the blood. Without blood, you die. But thank God when I got saved, I had a DNA change. I was dead, now alive. And, and when the blood was applied to my life, now I have everlasting life. So he said, drink this as often as you do in remembrance of me in this cup. So the bread, when you receive the bread, you are receiving and remembering his body. When you receive the juice and the element, you are receiving the blood. Now, he also tells us to examine ourselves. Again, I invite everyone who's ready to receive communion with us today. If you're not ready, that's okay. But if you're sitting there, if you're at home and you're thinking, well, Josh, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Well, great, take this moment. Take this moment. Have yourself a moment with the Lord and say, Lord, give me clean hands and a pure 
heart. Lord, all have sinned. I have sinned. Lord, would you forgive my sin? Would you cleanse me? Lord, would you make me right to receive and remember what you've done? Lord, I pray in Jesus' name as we receive these elements that you would be blessed as we remember, commemorate what you did for us. Lord, in receiving these elements, in receiving these elements, we are honoring you. But Lord, also our faith rises up. And as we receive these elements, Lord, we speak healing. We speak resurrection power. We speak reversal of doctor reports. We speak cancellation of surgeries. We speak to bodies to be healed. And we speak to prodigals to come home. We speak that there's life in the blood. Lord, let diabetes be healed. Let blood diseases be healed. Let eyes be healed, Lord. And all that we are, we want to receive and remember all that you've done in Jesus' name. Those that are serving, if you would go ahead and get in place and get prepared as we receive today. When the elements come to you and you receive your elements, I'm going to invite you to just receive them as you're ready. And then I, once we've all received the elements, then our servers will come back and, and get your cups. But again, once you receive the elements, and as we do this, the worship team is worshiping so you can worship, you can, you can sit, you can stand. Once you get your elements, that's up to you. But we're believing today as we receive. Everybody say receive and remember in Jesus' name. Amen. Service, if you'll go ahead and come forward.
of his glory in this place. Do you feel the presence of your Lord in this place? If you haven't received the elements, go ahead and do that. I want to invite you, if you would, one more time, just to stand with us. Can we cut it in half, the next one? Can we do that? The servers are going to come through here in a moment, and they're going to come and receive the cups, and you can drop them in the buckets there. Ah, what a day. What a day. Come on, what a day. Let's worship just a little as the servers come to receive your cups. Let's worship just a little more. Come on, servers. Come on. Can I make a declaration? This is the point in the service where I need to transition, but I got to do something different. Hallelujah. Because we need to get loud today. We need to make noise today. I, wasn't, I promised myself I wasn't going to do this, but I'm going to do it anyways. Hell. Hell cannot stand that you're worshiping a risen Savior. Hell, hell cannot stand. Head of the seat. Hell can Hell can't stand that you've been rescued from drugs. Hell can't stand that you're not lying anymore. Hell can't stand that you're not angry anymore. Hell can't stand that you're not who you were yesterday. Hell can't stand that he came out of the grave. Hell can't stand, my God, that you've been saved and redeemed and rescued from a devil's hell. Hell can't stand, amen. But I've got news for you. I'm on my way to glory. I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost on my way to heaven. I want you to shout so loud that you just tell hell to shut up. Shut up! What am I? 
just we just shifted there, didn't we? Now listen. If you're you're not on board just yet, I promised myself I wasn't gonna do this. But when hell declares war, they're so mad that there's a resurrection. Because they ain't got nothing any better. And a president who tries to tell you that he knows Jesus. I see, I'm about to lose some religious folks, but that's okay. Your car's still warm. But when Jesus came out of the grave, you see, the Bible says they'll have the form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. And when your president woke up on Friday and said, we're going to declare Sunday as something other than a resurrection, hell said to themselves, the pandemic didn't keep him quiet. COVID didn't shut him up. And so they said, we'll just keep pressing agendas until we get them. Honey, I'm going to tell you something. Zoom in real close if you want to. You can throw everything you've got at the body of Christ, but until you get a risen Savior, you need to keep your mouth shut because my God is alive, and no matter what you do, you cannot put him back in the grave. He'll never be in the grave again until you get one hell. Just keep your mouth shut. Now give him a praise. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise my, my, my. Now, if you don't know what Josh is talking about, just wait till you get home. You'll see it on the news. Because the White House has told you to celebrate anything other than a Savior. I'm telling you as your preacher, it's just that hell's mad that they don't have a risen Savior. It's just that hell's mad that they don't have a king upon the throne. And all they are going to do, and they're going to use the house called the White House to get the job done. But listen, you can keep your foolishness all you want. But go ahead and go over. The tomb is just across the bend. Go ahead and go over there. You can make all the noise you want because, listen, you aren't saved. You think you're saved, and you pretend that you're saved, and you've got the form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. But my God, go ahead and go to his grave. I'll promise you that it's absolutely empty. I'll promise you that there's nobody there there's not even bones there I'll promise you that on the third day the stone was rolled away and out of that tomb came a risen Savior I'll promise you that so you go ahead and roar as a roaring lion but my God has overcome the world in this world you shall have tribulation but be of good cheer I have overcome the world amen the White House is not in charge Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Let me let me end with this. Let me end with this, Lord. Lord, would you go to the White House and save them all? Lord, would you, would you come into this country, Lord Jesus, and change this country? Set people free. Amen. I'll tell you what, you ought to be the rowdiest group of people. It ought to be hard for us to lead you today. You should be so excited. Listen, I, you may not have one, but I got one. What you got? Let me, let me show you what I, I got. I got. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's, I got one. Anybody got one? Amen. Come on, slap somebody a high five. Tell somebody you're happy to see them this morning. Woo! Lord's in the house today. Hallelujah. Mm. (laughs) I don't know what you 
came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. Man, oh man, that was unexpected. I promised myself I wouldn't say nothing. <laughs> but you know, when the enemy, as a roaring lion, decides he's going to get loud, it's up to the church to get even louder. You agree with that? Amen. Amen. It might get loud. <laughs> welcome. Welcome to Covenant Church. For everyone that is in the house that is guest with us, everyone that's watching from around the world, happy Resurrection Sunday. God bless you. Oh, there's no other place that I'd rather be than in church with my brothers and sisters in the Lord, celebrating the resurrection and the life of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you are a guest with us here today, we are so thankful that you have chosen to come and celebrate Easter with us. If no one has welcomed you, welcome! <laughs> but uh, we would love to give you a, a guest packet and, and just to give you a little gift to say thank you for joining with us. And I know that everyone has been greeted because we have an awesome church family that loves everyone that comes and visits with us. So thank you for being with us. Uh, I have two quick announcements. As you can see, we have our elementary students with us in the sanctuary this morning. We're so excited to have all the little ones with us. We have a special treat for all the children 12 and under. Whenever church is over, come see me over at the Covenant Kids Welcome Area. And we have an Easter bag for all of the children. And we just wanted to bless you with that. Um, the next announcement that I have for you is every Wednesday is Discipleship Night here at Covenant Church. We, like, we say every service is really special and every service is really unique, but it really is. This Wednesday, we are having man of God and woman of God. And if you have never come out to be a part of a Wednesday night, this is the night for you to come out. And I just want to give you that really special invitation. And I'm going to go ahead and pass Yeah, on. yeah, man. I'm still, I'm, I'm, I'm in another place. I'm sorry. I'm still feeling the Lord. Do you need my help? <laughs> maybe, maybe. I just, yeah. I, I'm sorry. We got a couple. I got a. I got. I have an announcement as well. I just. I don't know. In my spirit, I just felt like the Lord told me is like, listen. They declared war. Open your mouth. And so, it's like, we uh, next next weekend. Next weekend is Man of God here on Saturday, uh, the sixth at seven o'clock. All the men, come on. Now, last year when we did Man, Man of God, we had 93 men come out and be a part. And it's just, it's a, it's, a, it's a night full of all the men coming together. And Pastor Rich is coming from Moorfield. I wonder how many women, I can't hear the ones at home, but how many women in the room would love to see the men in their life, whether that's your husband, your son. Now, how many women would like to see the men in their life be a part of this? Come on. I personally want to invite even all the fathers, grandfathers. Listen, this is also important that we get the young men to come out and be a part of this. If they're 12 and up, we want you to be in this house. We want all the men to be in this house. It's going to be an epic night. And then, of course, Pastor Rich will be with us the next day. But don't miss this weekend. Don't miss this opportunity. Men, listen. Uh, I don't want to always feel like we're chasing the women. I know you, you, some of you are like, well, that's what I used to do. I'm not talking about that chase. I'm not, that's not what I'm talking about. I, I'm, I mean, if the women had about 270 women at their, at their conference, then we know what we've got to do. Amen? We know what we've got to do. But please, men, invite personally. Invite people to come, even the men in this room. Grab somebody by the hand, shake their hand, and say, Hey, I want to personally invite you to come be a part. And listen, men, bring your nephews, bring your sons, bring, bring your neighbors. If they're 12 and up, we want all of them to be here. And, of course, again, Rich will be here the next day. We're going to receive our tithes and offerings. We're going to be quick about this. The ushers, the ushers are going to come, and we're just going to receive what the Lord has in giving, whether you're in the house or at home. You know that there are many, many different ways that you can 
give. You can give online. You can uh, scan a QR code. You can text. You can mail it in. You can put it in a tithing box. But we at Covenant believe that it is vitally important to be as obedient in, in giving as we are in every other area of our life. Amen. And and I'll promise you that when in every area that you're obedient, you see blessing. You see harvest. That's just how it works. And that's according to the Bible. Amen. So we just, Lord, we just thank you for this amazing day. We thank you for all of your blessing. Lord, we ask that you bless every seed that is sown, whether in the house, whether from home, Lord, wherever that seed is coming from, the seed into your storehouse. We ask that you bless it, multiply it, have harvest come from it. We bless you. Thank you in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. amen. If you could meet the ushers as they come, or if you're giving online, you that's a much easier. You know how that works. Amen, amen, amen. Happy resurrection. Somebody say happy resurrection. Happy resurrection. Happy resurrection. You'll find, I'm not trying to be mean, but you'll find no Easter bunnies and Easter eggs, and you'll find none of that stuff uh, in, in the sermon today. This is all about Jesus. I, I'm, not, I'm not condemning that other stuff, but today is all about Jesus. Amen. What a day. I tell you what, you know if you're losing your voice before you've even preached that it's a good day. It's a good day. Can I, can I give you guys just a, a brief word today? If you'll take your Bible, I'm going to go to three places. But if you'll follow me into the book of Ephesians, I would certainly appreciate that today. What a resurrection Sunday morning. Pastor Sarah gave us a word at 9 o'clock. We had a great service at 9 o'clock. We had great worship at 9 o'clock. And here we are at 1030. This is, you know, we, we said it, she said it this morning, this is your Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah. Now, if you're new with us and you're thinking, well, you know, why do they have to scream? Why are they so loud? Have you ever watched the Super Bowl? Come on. Yeah. Have you ever, you ever seen? I, people, people were paying at minimum ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 to go watch a football game. And then they lose their mind when they get there. I've said it a thousand times. I'll continue to say it. Why does the world and why do religious people expect that when you come to church, they need to be calm and quiet and have it all together? This group of people across the land today, there should be people across the world today excited about the resurrection. What else is there? Amen. I mean, come on. What, what else is there? You, do you guys all know that we're going to the same place? We got the same celebration. We've all been redeemed. We're going to the same heaven. And we should all have the same excitement because Jesus came and he changed my life and he changed your life. We're forever changed in Jesus' name. But listen, for those that think that you ought to keep a lid on it, <clears throat> I don't know how that works. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know how to keep a lid on it. I've been doing this all my life. I'm, I'm 46. I've been doing this for 47 years. I heard preaching before I came out the womb. But this is my day. This is your day. This is just a day for us to remember what our Savior did for us. And I pray that you're excited about it. I pray that you feel changed. I pray that you know the Lord loves you. I pray that you know that, you know, Jesus would, would, would travel a thousand miles just to come and rescue. You know what I thought about yesterday? I'm going to preach here in a moment. I get to testify before I preach. You know what I thought about yesterday? He'll leave the 99 for the one. You, you, you guys all know that, right? He'll leave 99 for the one. You know what I thought about yesterday? This thought came to me. I forgot all about this. There was a time where I was the one. Come on, everybody in this room needs to be able to remember. Wait a minute. There was a day that I was the one. There, there was a day when I was the one he came after. He was willing to leave everybody else. And he found his way to Logan County, West Virginia to call my name. I know what you're thinking. Can anything good? Yes, I found the Lord right there because he called my name. Amen. Amen. I want to preach to you today Messiah's victory. Messiah's 
victory. I'm going to be in Ephesians 1 and then Philippians 2 if you're following me. Ephesians 1 is where I'm going to go first. Messiah's victory. If you're there, just shout amen. amen. Verse number 17, and it says this. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Now look at that last line. God wants to give you revelation in who Jesus is. Revelation in who Jesus is. And verse 18, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of your calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Verse 19, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us? This is what Pastor Sarah preached. Who, what? Believe. Do you believe? Yes. Come on. What is his exceeding power? And greatness toward those who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Which he worked in Christ when what? He raised him from the dead and seated him. Can you say seated him? At the right hand in the heavenly places. Far above. Here, church, listen. Far above all principality, all power, all might. All dominion, every name that is named, not only in this age, but in that which is to come. Verse 21 again. Christ is far above all principality, all power, the White House, might, dominion, Hollywood, every name that is named, not only in this age, but that which is to come. Christ is over all of it. Verse 22. And he put all things under his feet. And he gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body. Somebody say, that's me. that's me. The fullness of him who feels all and all. Can I start at verse 20 just one more time, just for my sake, not for yours, but for me. He worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead. There's no other God that's been risen from the dead. Not before him, not after him. There's no other God. That's where you should start if you're trying to figure out who I'm supposed to follow. Start with a risen Savior. Yes. And if your God doesn't raise from the dead, then you should choose a different one. And I'm going to say it again. There's only one, and his name is Jesus Christ. And the tomb is already empty. <laughs> he raised him from the dead. Seated him, catch this now, at his right hand, where? In heavenly places. I don't have a lot of time to get into this, but Jesus being seated at the right hand of the Father in heavenly places. That's not a picture of multiple thrones. That is a picture of Jesus being the absolute authority, absolute strength, absolute dominion, absolute power. Everything that is and is to come belongs to Jesus and Jesus alone. Whew. Far above all principality, all power, all might, all dominion, every name that is named. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Every, every what that is named, every name that is named, principality, powers, might, dominion, every name that is named, not only in this age, but in the age which is to come. Let me preach to you something really, really brief here. Y'all got to notice this this morning. I preached this a couple weeks ago. There's no battle out of hell that you're fighting that Jesus hasn't already overcome. There's no trouble that you're facing that Jesus hasn't already come. There's no turmoil that you're facing. There's no frustration that you're facing. There's no test that you're facing that Jesus hasn't already come. Come on, church. Now, somebody preach with me. There is nothing that you'll face yesterday, today, or tomorrow that Jesus hasn't already come. There's no demon out of hell that Jesus doesn't already have power over. He has all above principality, power, might, and dominion. Every name that is named, there is no name named that Jesus doesn't have dominion and power over. 
Don't tell me what your prestigious title is because Jesus is higher. Don't tell me how much money you have because Jesus is higher. Don't tell me how many degrees hang on your wall because Jesus is higher. Don't tell me about the cult you belong to because Jesus is higher. Don't tell me that your church is the only church that will make it to heaven because Jesus is higher. You want to know why this is important? I heard somebody say this the other day. I don't know his name, but I'll give him credit this time. The next time credit belongs to me. And he began to talk about how that there's something, Jesus, Jesus, there's something about that name. Because it says in every name that is named. You know why? Because, listen, Jesus was given. Let me read the next set of scripture before you, before I tell you what I'm about to tell you. In Philippians chapter 2, right around verse number 8, it would say this, and being found in appearance as a man. That's my God. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death on the cross. Therefore, God has also highly exalted him and given him the name, not a name, not not a particular name. God gave him the name. (laughs) Y'all get that? God gave him the name. My, 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 which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee would bow, every every one, every those in heaven, those on earth, those under the earth, those living, those dead, it doesn't matter, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. God has given him the name, and his name is Jesus. Can I tell this church this morning, there's something important about the name. There's something important. The Bible says that when you call that name, demons tremble, that even the Bible even says that devils recognize the name. You might not know the name. You might not like the name. But even devils, demons recognize the name of Jesus. Why? Because God gave him the name. The name that is above every other name. And at that name of Jesus, every knee would bow on earth, in the heaven and under earth. You cannot outrun God simply by being put in a grave. Whether you do it on this earth or in the life to come you will bend a knee to the Lord Jesus Christ and declare that he is God demonic beings that say well I'll avoid God altogether and just go straight to hell honey let me tell you something right now you religious fanatic you will still have to bow a knee before the Lamb of God and you will still have to declare that he is the one with the name why is that important because he has a name and his name is Jesus It's important for you to know that because Satan doesn't have one. What's God's name? Jesus. Yeshua. What's God's name? Yahweh. What's Satan's name? Whoa, ain't got one. What's the devil's name? Whoa, ain't got one. What's the demon's names? Ain't got one. That's why even they understand that they have to bow to the name that God has given the only begotten Son of God. That at that name, I'll say it again, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. The devil that you are so afraid of is such a loser that not only does he not have the keys to his house he doesn't even have a name badge that's how you know the devil has no power because he has no name you're trying to figure it out right now stop it do it when you get home (laughs) Satan is a title Devil is a title. Lucifer is a title. The anointed one is a title. Christ is a title. 
Jesus even has a lot of titles. I'll tell you some of them here in a minute. But before he got a title, the angel came down and said, You're going to have a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. Mm. He's been raised from the dead by the Father. This is my Savior. This is Messiah's victory. He's been given a name. I don't know about your Messiah, but my Messiah has a victory. And he's seated at the right hand in heavenly places. And what that means is, is my risen Savior has all power over death, hell, and the grave. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? You'll never find another so-called God. Who has done what mine has done. Willingly went to a cross. Bled and died. Just so that I could have life. As you sit here today. And you look at me. And you ponder and you examine your life. And all the wrong you have done. And we've all got it. Ain't none of us free of sin. But thanks be to God, on my eternal record, the sin that is in my past that I have repented of, on my eternal record, it does not exist. On your eternal record, it does not exist. Not only is there not another God who's ever risen out of the grave, there's not another God that would go to a cross, willingly bleed and die just to pay your debt. Man, we have a couple of you in this room who would be willing to participate in what people call pay it forward. You go through the drive through and find out somebody got a sandwich for $7.83 and you pay it forward and you buy their sandwich. <laughs> but when a man hung on a cross... That said, nobody puts me there. I let myself go there. When a man hangs on a cross, when a man that's hanging on the cross says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. When a man hanging on the cross with another man says, Today you'll be with me in paradise. When that man hanging on the cross all of a sudden stretched out his hands and declared, It is Finish. Listen, I'm telling you, everything from death, hell, the grave, heaven, and hell, everything had a period put on it when Jesus said, It is finished. It's done. Finish. It's over. Josh, how can I be forgiven of my sins? A willing Savior came for the purpose. It wasn't by accident. You're thinking, oh, it was terrible that they put him on that cross. He came to be put on the cross. It was by no accident. He came to be put on a cross to pay a debt that you couldn't pay. Come on. He came and put himself on a cross to pay for sins that he knew you would not be. Just as he loved me that much. I wish I could introduce you to a lot of people throughout this room who've got great testimonies of who they used to be and God somehow changed them and they're no longer those people anymore. The grace of God will reach further down than you can reach up. That's what the grace of God will do. But I'm telling you today, I serve a God with a name. I serve a God with the name Jesus. I serve a God with the name Yahweh. The devil doesn't have one. That's why the Bible says, as a roaring lion, that he begins to roar. And whether he does it in front of your house or out of the White House, it does does not matter because let the enemy roar because the real king has a name and when you speak that name if you ever want to make snakes feel uncomfortable speak the name Jesus 
If you're ever walking through your house and feel darkness, just begin to call the name Jesus. If you're ever in the hospital and the doctor's giving you a bad report, just speak Jesus. If your kids have ever become a prodigal, just go into the prayer closet and just begin to speak the name Jesus. When you're married to a heathen, just begin to speak the name Jesus. When your president loses his ever-loving mind, just say Jesus. Jesus, there's just something about that name. And do you know why? Woo, do you know why demons tremble when they hear the name Jesus? Because they don't even have a name to recognize their own boss. Because the one that controls them, they understand his name. Y'all got to grab this just for two minutes. Every demon in hell understands his name because he's been to their residence. They know him. They know they are subject to him. They know they have no power in his presence. I'm going to drive this home just for one more minute. Every area of your life needs to be overtaken by the, by the magnificent Messiah's victory. And his name is Jesus. When I don't know what to preach, I just say Jesus. When I don't know what to sing, I just say Jesus. When I don't know how to fight a battle, I just say Jesus. When a demon needs cast out, I just say Jesus. When cancer needs broken, I just say Jesus. When marriage needs restored, I just say Jesus. When we're praying for prodigals, you know you ought to be in church. Get your life together. Stop acting like a fool. Jesus. When peace has left my mind and I'm in trouble and I'm in the midst of a storm, I just start saying, Jesus. When the world seems to be in chaos and I don't know what to do, I just say, Jesus. Why? Because everything in heaven, on earth, and under earth must bow at the name Jesus. That's why we have songs just about his name. Preacher, I don't understand when you guys sing Yeshua. I don't understand what that means. Honey, that's just his name in a different language. But there's something about that name. I'm going to give you one more verse, Hebrews 12 and 2. Write this down. Looking unto who? Jesus. Now, why would it say his name there? Looking unto Jesus, the author, the finisher of my faith, who for the joy, come on now, that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Woo! Mm-mm-mm. I got news for you today. That's my, let me tell you about my Jesus. Let me tell you about my God. I can't talk about yours. Hallelujah. How many of you are affirmed and you believe that there's power in the name of Jesus? Hear what I've got to tell you today. More than 2,000 years ago, a crowd gathered at Pilate's Hall. Deceived by religious leaders, they cried out and demanded the crucifixion and death of Jesus, shouting, crucify him, crucify him. That courtyard is now empty. Shortly thereafter, Jesus was taken to the whipping post where his body was relentlessly beaten and mutilated. That whipping post is now empty. Suffering abuse and mockery, Jesus was nailed to an old rugged cross. That timber, listen, stained with righteous blood, holes that once held three rusty nails, and a crown of thorns that had fragments of flesh. But I can tell you today, that cross is empty. His lifeless body carried to a garden that held a borrowed tomb, and on the third day, 
The stone was rolled away and Jesus came forth with all power over death and hell. But I can tell you today, that tomb is empty. Amen. The courtyard, now empty. The whipping post, now empty. The cross, now empty. The tomb, now empty. But the throne. <laughs> but I can promise you today the throne of our glorious King is forever occupied. Yeah. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Oh, you are worthy, oh Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne and the number of them was ten thousands times ten thousands and a thousands upon thousands saying with a loud voice worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him who sits on the throne Throne and to the Lamb of God forever and ever and ever. I can tell you today that his blessed name is Jesus. I can tell you today the tomb may be empty, the cross may be empty, but the throne of your glorious King, come on, your Messiah's victory says that the throne is occupied. His name is Jesus, Almighty, Alpha, Omega, Anointed One, Author and Finisher of Faith, Adonai, Beginning and End, Beloved, Son, Bread of Life, Bright and Morning Star, Chief Cornerstone, Chosen of God, Christ our King, Christ our Lord, Chosen One, Deliverer, Diadem, Door, Emmanuel, Eternal Life, Everlasting Father, Elohim, El Roy, El Elyon, El Shaddai, Faithful and True. True, first begotten, first fruits. Ah, oh, somebody say his name is Jesus, friend of sinners, glorious Lord, good master, great high priest, great Lord, great shepherd, head of all, holy and righteous one, holy child, hope of glory, horn of salvation, Jehovah Jireh, your provider, Jehovah Nisi, your banner, Jehovah Rapha, my healer, Jehovah Shalom, my peace, Jehovah Sid Canoe, my righteousness, Jehovah. M. Kaddish, my sanctifier, Jehovah Shammah is present, Jehovah Ra, my shepherd, King eternal, King of glory, Lamb of God, light, lily of the valley, line of the tribe of Judah, living bread, Lord of lords, Messiah, mighty God, morning star, only begotten son, our Passover, Prince of peace, redeemer, ransom, resurrection and life, righteous judge, rock of offense, root of David, rose of Sharon, salvation, Savior, Son of God, Son of Man, true vine, the way, the truth, and the life. Wonderful the word. His name is Jesus. Come on, can you give your Savior today an honor and a praise? Come on, shout unto God with a voice of triumph this morning. Come on, church, you serve our risen Savior, and His name is Jesus. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, whoo, hallelujah. Come on, can you just, if you can, can you just offer him a praise right now? If you can just lift up your hands right now. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Holy, holy. You are. 
all across this room right now at home you don't know the Lord as your Savior I want you to make a bold choice right now I want you to make a bold choice right now come on altar workers just some of you come up around the front around these altars not in your normal positions not in your normal positions just lying all the way around leave, leave, leave some space at the altars if you don't know the Lord today if you don't know the Lord today as your Savior I want you to come I want you to step out from where you are right now I want you to make a bold declaration the reason I had these people come on altar workers don't turn turn around turn around to the altars turn around to the altars pray pray to the altars there you go speak to the altars if you're in this room today and you don't know the Lord maybe you've walked away whatever it may be in your life I want you to step out from where you are this is a bold altar call today I want you to step out from where you are and I want you to come and I want you to say I'll not spend another day without knowing the Lord Jesus Christ as my life I want you to step out those of you that are in this room you're looking for a touch in your body you need a miracle in your body I want you to come I want you to kneel before this altar I want you to call upon the Lord. Come on, church, let's move. Come on, come on, come on. Let's move. Those of you in this room, you've been asking for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Come on, I want you to come. I want you to come. I want you to get ready. I want you to ask the Lord to fill you. To touch you. This is your moment to move. This is your moment to move. Come on, I need some altar ushers. Let's move, folks. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, no. Come on. Come on, if the Lord's speaking to your heart, make your way to these altars. There's people all through this place. The Lord is calling your name. He's speaking your name. He's calling you to come. This is your moment. This is your hour. This is your day. To receive. These altars are open.
him today? How many of you know you serve a great God? A great God. Hallelujah. How many of us know that we're not worthy of him being good to us, but he, he loves us anyways? Hallelujah. What a day. What a day. I don't know if you feel what I feel, but man, there's just excitement. There should be excitement in the air. Religion. Religion would have you come or watch a church service for an hour and a half and go home and then it be over. Relationship will require you to leave this place and still tell somebody else his name is Jesus and he's alive. Relationship will not let you keep it quiet. How many of you know that's true? Relationship will not let you keep it quiet. My God's alive. <laughs> Can I tell you guys a secret about my family before you leave? My wife has been acting very strange lately. There's this thing on TV called March Madness. And I could care less. That's how backwards we are. The good game is on TV. She's glued, man. And she's cheering. I'm in another, I'm in the office or wherever in the house. I'm in the garage and I hear yelling and screaming like what is going on well, it was a good game she's like you want what do you want to watch like i don't care i'll just go to the garage i'll go to the bay i'll go somewhere what's your game i know some guy just like man i love a woman like that but today they're going to continue celebrating how odd that easter is in the middle of march madness it just brings me back to the point. I just want to encourage you today to learn how to give a sacrifice of praise from your lips. Learn not to be ashamed. The Bible says if you don't cry out, the rocks will cry out. You're supposed to talk about Jesus. You're supposed to be excited about it. You're supposed to. Let me tell you about my Jesus as my wife is cheering and she doesn't have a team she just likes the games and last night I was doing anything but watching those games and I would hear her she just kept saying bam there's another three bam there's another three oh my gosh 15 seconds later bam another three And I woke up this morning, saw an empty tomb, and I said, bam, there's another three. He's risen, church. We ought to be excited about it. <laughs> Lord, we praise you. We honor you. Keep Jesus our Messiah's victory. There is none like you. And we celebrate you, not just in service, but we celebrate you all day long. Lord, we love you. Fill our hearts with your goodness. Heal the sick. Touch all of those who came to get salvation today. Change the lives of all who will believe. In Jesus' name. Come on, how many of you believe? Do you believe? Hallelujah. They're going to worship. Shout hallelujah. Give somebody a high five. Have an amazing Sunday.